I can't lie to you people, it's taken me quite a long time to get this video done. Mainly because of laziness and other things, but yeah, mainly because of laziness. But anyways, here it is. <clears throat> I think Andy Fowler is going to unbox Liam Smith over 12 rounds. And um, the reason why I think this is because um, I feel like Andy Fowler has the, um, the height advantage, probably the reach advantage as well. I think he's got enough boxing skills to outbox Liam Smith. Liam Smith, um, to me, seems a bit of a basic fighter. He's a, <laughs> a come forward fighter. You know, he puts his hands up and just puts pressure. That's really about it. He's not exactly the fastest. He may be a bit stiff, to be honest with you. But, um, yeah, I just feel like Andy Fowler will have the boxing skills to outbox Liam Smith. I feel like Andy Fowler is a lot more fluid. He might be faster on his feet. He might faster hands. And I think he's just a better box between the two. And I think Anthony Fowler will keep <laughs> Liam Smith on the end of his jab, you know, and I'll point him. Because um, in the Liam Williams fight, I feel like Liam Williams won the second fight. It was close, but I feel like Liam Williams won. And when Liam Williams had a lot of success just by using his jab. And Liam Williams primarily is a pressure fighter. But even when you fought on the back foot against Liam Smith, um, he had a lot of success in the first fight and the second fight. And Liam Smith is um, a slow start to me. <laughs> um, he started slow against um, Liam Williams in both of their fights. He started slow against Kurbanov. He um, he started slow against that guy he fought in Mexico. I forgot the guy's name. Um, it was on it was on the Strada Beeman on the card. Um, Liam Smith will start slow against him and um, I feel like it will take Liam Smith a couple of rounds <clears throat> to turn up the pace but during those rounds I think Anthony Fowler will you know be you know racking up the points you know um, outpointing him using his jab you know landing power shots and because Liam Smith doesn't really have too much head movement so I feel like he's gonna get hit anyways because Liam Smith does tend to get hit in his fights quite a bit. You know, in the Mungia fight, he took a lot of punishment. And, you know, Mungia and Fowler are, are two different fighters. But what I will try and say between the two is that I feel like um, Fowler is a lot more technically punished than Mungia. Um, I feel like he's a, a better boxer than Mungia. Um, probably better defense than Mungia. Um, Maybe better foot with Oman Gear to be honest with you. Um and Liam Smith still, you know, got appointed by him. But I will say the difference between Fala and Mongear though is that Fala most likely isn't as physically strong as Mongear and he ain't got Mongear's work rate. May not even have his power, I don't know. Um yeah, but that's that's what I took from it, you know, Mongear outbox Liam Smith. Me uh, partly because of work rate as well, but you know, Mungia was, you know, about to, was, a, was out boxing Smith at times. And I feel like Andy Fowler um, will be able to do the same thing, you know. But like I said, um, Smith, you know, gets it quite a bit, you know. He doesn't move his head really that much. And obviously, you, if you're coming out of fire up and they've got a height and reach advantage and you're not moving your head and you've got your hands up, you probably will be an easy target to hit. And I feel like Liam Smith in the Mongeo fight, the Williams fight, the um, the Kavanaugh fight, he made himself a bit of an easy target to hit, you know. And in those fights that I mentioned, um, he didn't, he won't, he's not going to get, um, he didn't start um, going until, you know, a bit later on in the fight after that. Like, Three, four rounds to slip past him. That's when he starts to, you know, up up the ante, especially in a Kerbinov fight, where, he, in my in my opinion, he lost the early rounds, and then he upped up a bit. And I think the thing with Liam Smith is that he's a bit one paced. And what I mean by that is that <laughs> he doesn't really turn it. I mean, he does turn up the pace. Don't get me wrong, but once he turns up the pace, he doesn't turn it up more because typically, what you see with guys here. Yeah, when um, they start late is that they up up the pace but they continue to up it up like for example 
for example, Alexander Usyk. Alexander Usyk is a notorious slow, um, slow star, but when he starts slow and he ups up the pace, he continues to up up that pace. And by that time, he's gone to the 12th round, his opponents are tired. Um, another example I'm, I will give you is um, Jose Carlos Ramirez. You know, Ramirez, he's a slow star as well. He's a slow star against Jose Zabeda. Um, slow star against Amir Imam. Um, slow star against Victor Postal. But at the end of those fights, it was the opponent, Imam, Postal and Zabeda that were tight. You know, that's what I mean. And with Liam Smith, that's not really often the case. His opponents are not really dead tired, you know, and he's fully energised. It's usually him and his opponent having the same, around the same energy levels. And, you know, but with Karbanov, Liam Smith started a bit late and Karbanov was tired and Liam Smith didn't really push it. You know, it's clear that Karbanov was tired, but Liam Smith didn't really push it. And that's what I mean, like, even when Liam Smith is slow starting up to the ante, he doesn't quite up it up to where it needs to be because at that point, he's already lost several rounds. And, you know, when you made your opponent tired, you got to make him tired even more by upping up the pace. That's why I brought up Olizana Usyk and Jose Carlos Ramirez because when they spend those early rounds getting that box, they eventually up up the pace to where it mentally fatigues their opponent, it physically fatigues them. And it comes to the point where their opponent is just, you know, tired. And Liam Smith ain't really exactly like that. Now, what I would like to add is that Anthony Fowler himself don't really have that much head movement. Um, either, you know, like, I think against Jorge Forteo, you know, he got caught with a big right hand that bothered him momentarily. You know, occasionally Anthony Fowler can get caught with a big shot here and there because of the lack of head movement. And also with his style, Anthony Fowler, he keeps his hands low, you know, you know, he jabs with his lead hand, obviously, and then he keeps his lead hand low. And if you're not moving your head and, you know, say like Liam Smith counters over the jab with a right hand, you, you can occasionally get caught. Um, he was doing this to Munguia in that fight, I think earlier on, um, where, you know, he would counter Munguia's lead hand with a right hand. You know, because Monkey in that fight kept his lead hand low as well. You keep his lead hand low, you throw a punch, but his lead hand will be low while he's in range to be countered. And Liam Smith capitalized that out a couple of times. So, in order for Liam Smith to have success, um, I thought Liam Smith needed to do that. In order, for, Also, in order for Liam Smith to have success, obviously he's going to have to go to the body, but he also is going to have to use his jab. He gets some egg into him when he uses his jab, you know, he's having success, you know, um, Obviously, Sam Egerton, you know, different kind of fire and whatnot. But when Liam Smith used to jab against Sam Egerton, you know, Egerton didn't really have much answers. And Liam Smith completely dominated the fight and stopped Sam Egerton. And um, Liam Smith does have a good jab when he decides to use it. You know, when he was using his jab against Liam Williams, you know, was giving Liam Williams problems with that. Um, when he was using his jab against Mongil, you know, he was looking good. So, Liam Smith does have a good job when he decides to use it. I just feel like he doesn't use it enough because he often spends a lot of time walking forward in straight lines. Um, in straight lines with hands up and no head movement and not really doing much. And when you give up the early rounds like that, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit hard to recover from. Um, I don't think Anthony Fowler will stop Liam Smith because I think Liam Smith's a tough guy. Um, the amount of punishment he's against him, Mungia, you know, I think warrants him for being a tough guy. Um, Liam Williams, who's an underrated puncher in my opinion, you know, Liam Smith took his punch as well. And, you know, he didn't even go down. In fact, I don't think he ever really was hurting either of their fights. Um, you know, Liam Smith being an underrated puncher, you know, he, I think he was the first guy to stop Mark Kefron. He was the first guy to stop Atlantis Fox. He was the first guy to stop Kareem Archer. He, um, he was the first guy to stop Joe Melinder. He was, yeah, there's a lot of things Liam Williams has done. He also had a, a draw day on ice skates as well when he fought. So Liam Williams is an underrated puncher, you know. I, I don't think a lot of people realise how hard Liam Williams can hit. But he can bang. And um, Liam Smith took his punches, you know, without too much problems. So that's how for a fight between these two are going to go. Um, I thought Andy Fowler would outbox Liam Smith over 12 rounds. Um... Obviously, I feel like Liam Smith will fight very hard, and there may be times where Liam Smith um, 
you know, wins a couple rounds and gives Anthony Fowler, you know, a run for his money. But ultimately, I feel Anthony Fowler would comfortably win the fight. Um, probably around 116, 112 scorecard, 117, 111. I think it'd be a good fight, but I think it'd just be one of those fights again, like the Kerbin fight where, you know, Liam Smith loses the first couple of rounds and then, you know, he ups up the ante, but doesn't up it up and off to where he needs it to be, you know? So yeah, that's my prediction for how a fight between Liam Smith and Anthony Fowler will go. I've got Anthony Fowler on points, 12 rounds. I don't think a knockout's gonna happen. Um, yeah, so. I don't think there's any, I don't think there's really gonna be any knockdowns in this fight. There might be, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's gonna be any knockdowns in the fight. I think it's gonna be a fight that goes twelve rounds with no knockdowns and whatnot. Um maybe one of them gets hurt in a fight or whatnot. But I don't think you'll ever come to the point where any of them goes down or anything like that. But I could be wrong. Um is my my opinion, my prediction after all. Um doesn't mean too much until the fight happens and yeah um so the first i'm out thank you for watching anyone that's watching this put down your predictions in the comments below don't forget to like subscribe i'll see you guys later peace